Hello there. Merry Christmas to everybody that celebrates it. Otherwise, happy solstice and blessed be. It's um uh, <clears throat> I celebrate both over the years for different reasons, but I have to say I think I'm more aligned with the solstice because it is a planetary universal cycle versus a religious uh religious denomination. And for me that that makes it more um, universal or global. We all can celebrate on this hemisphere the uh, return of the light. And it always feels like a relief to me when we cross that threshold. Even if winter can be long, it certainly is long, but at least the daylight increases and it helps a lot. So, and it's also the symbolism of the light returning as well, isn't it? We've gone within into the darkness right before the, the Christmas holidays. And then you reach the lowest point or the darkest hour and you start to emerge. So that's nice symbolism too. So I wanted to, I'm, I'm being told, I'm giving messages to talk about something before we start the astrology reading that I find important and can be helpful this time of year. And that is to do a bit of space clearing. There's a lot of expectations and built up energy from this dark period. And also just from all of the, the worry, stress, strain around Christmas time, even if it's a happy time, it's still a busy, stressful time. Um, and for some of us, it is not a happy time. Um, so I really want to talk about how to help you cleanse and release some energy around your space, uh, around your person and your space as you're hosting, entertaining, as you're, you just want to clear some energy around you and make the house and the home feel cleaner and clearer energetically for everybody. And also you can clean and clear the energies after guests leave if you need to. And that is, first of all, you can use sage. <clears throat> and you only need a little bit. It'll make enough smoke. And you can either take that and wash it over you. You can circle it around you. And just go everywhere around you. You know, I'm not going to stand up and do all of it, but I would do, I would do my back, front, legs, under my feet. Start with yourself. And just ask that anything in honor around me, no longer for my highest good, is released. Back to source. Always say back to source. Or to be retrained in the light or whatever have you. Sometimes people have a hard time with, well, if I'm removing something that's negative, then where does it go? How do I know it's gone? Just ask it to go to the light, back to source, or be retrained in the light. And if you feel any areas where there's still a bit of fuzziness or aches and pains, you just maybe want to go over those a bit extra because maybe that's where something's around. Then if you feel the need to clean, to clean your space, you can start with your front door and you can just go around your front door and cleanse and clear the, the threshold of your doorway and pray, say what you would like to enter and what you would like to leave like a boundary energetically, if you wish. And then you can proceed to walk in one direction and just move that sage in and around the home until you go all the way around it. And then you've said your prayers of, you know, bringing in what you want and releasing what you don't. And then you can open the windows for a bit and let the fresh air clear that out. And you'll see there's a love, there's a lightness that'll happen. Things will, will feel like they're, they're moving. The second thing you can use if if it's particularly heavy energy, and that means, you know, you have to spend time with, uh, let's say, very toxic people, people you're not comfortable with, or you, or if you feel like there was uh, somebody in the, um, I don't know, it doesn't have to be bad relations. It can be even just somebody who's going through a really hard time and their depression walks through the door and sits in your living room for several hours. It's not to judge them, but, or... You know, something where you're having a hard time if the sage doesn't work, um, 
sometimes people bring spirits into the home with them as well, you know, and they don't mean to. The stronger one, and you can do the same thing we just did, is to use rosemary. Rosemary is more for banishing. So we'll leave it at that. And if you if you need any more help with that, or if that rings a bell, you can write to me and I could help you further. <clears throat> but for now, we're going to get into the full moon, which is on the 27th in Cancer. And it's sort of a big deal right now for Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, and Libra, because <clears throat> Pluto is in the final degrees of Capricorn and it's going to leave for good on the 20th of January. We don't have long, we have one month and then it's gonna be gone. And that is a very long 16 year influence where Capricorn, it was putting you through the ringer and identity crisis and losses and just complete self-reformation. Aries, it was affecting your career and your work for 10 years. Cancer, it's been affecting your relationships for 10, for sorry, 16 years, 16. It's a long time to be going through a long lesson in your relationships or your career or your who am I? And Libra, it's been going through <clears throat> your fourth house of home, your roots, your foundation of what is my house? What is my family? What is my, it's heavy. It's heavy in there. So there will be relief on those fronts. Now is the time in the final month of it, the last drip. It's not about going back down the rabbit hole of things you have already been thinking of, weighing over, mulling over, wondering why, breaking your head against. It's not time to do that anymore. It's time to step back and say, this chapter is done. I'm not doing that anymore. So now, what did I learn? How far have I come? What's different about me from 2008 to now? Long time, eh? Very long time. So just really give yourself a moment to think of how much you've grown on those areas of your life. It's huge. This also applies to you if you were Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, Libra, rising or moon. It applies to you as well. And so this final moon in Cancer, full moon in Cancer, while we still have Pluto and Capricorn, this is the last time we're going to get this. Um, so there's sort of one final activation coming. And then I hope you will be able to say, you know what, whatever happens with this full moon, call it a day, call it a day. It's done. I declare this chapter over. I declare this lesson learned. Do you know? Yeah, it's been long enough. Now it's time for the rebirth part of Pluto, where you're liberated from something. That's where we're going next. So let's take a look at this chart for all. All right, so here's our chart for the full moon. So we have, based on the Eastern time zone, we have the full moon in Cancer at four degrees over here in the 11th house. And we have a Leo as the rising sign. So as you can see, the configuration is quite different than our Sag new moon. Quite different, right? The aspects are drawn and just the, the overall feeling when you look at, at the, the lines and the spread out of the planets, it's a very different feeling. I'm sure when you first look at the charts every time, if you follow me, you sort of get a vibe of, of the chart. So it strikes me that the Cancer moon is sitting there all alone on, on the one side. Here is the, this dividing line, the MC and the IC is the dividing line for, on this side, we have self-directed, self-motivated, maybe loners, maybe self-starters, leaders. Over here we have, I must rely on other people. I'm better in groups. I'm better behind the scenes. I like to work in teams. I have to rely on others to get my goals. 
So as you can see, the, most of the planets fall on the teamwork and cluster side. Uh, otherwise, we have the horizon line, the ace, ascendant, descendant, and we have a good spread of planets above and below. So some of these energies we're more aware of, some of them not so much, but it's a, it's a good mix. But it really does strike us that the moon is over here all alone. So you can look at that a couple of ways. The Cancer Moon, people with the Cancer Moon anyway are very sensitive. They're very empathic. They pick up on everything everyone feels. They can't hide their own feelings. They'll cry at the drop of a hat. They will give someone the shirt off their back. They'll they'll make you food if you're sick. You know, they'll they'll nurture you. They can't help it. It's just who they are. They give it and they also need it. Now, sometimes the moon over there on the other side alone could mean you need some alone time right now. Maybe you want to cocoon and take it easy. I'm hearing a lot of people saying that their their Christmas is just going to be chill. It's just going to be simple. One or two people and rest. And that's it. And they're happy to do that. And um, And then others, of course, are really putting on the big spreads and dinners and parties. <clears throat> which is a very Leo rising thing to do. Putting on the party, show show your decor, show off your cooking, you know, include everyone and ha try to have this fun, high energy atmosphere for it. The moon in Cancer is more about needing to rest and needing space to feel things out. Maybe feeling very lonely, maybe feeling very sentimental. Um, Unless you're in a position where you're happily nurturing others around you, um, that could certainly be the case, but it could also equally be the case that you need nurturing. So it sort of looks like, are you needing to be away from the crowd and the bustle, or are you feeling left out of it? That could be part of this full moon. Um. So let's take a look at the aspects that it makes. So, <clears throat> of course, it's always going to oppose at a full moon, the sun. Capricorn is at four degrees. And we still have Mars and Mercury and Sagittarius, but at the end of the, the, the sign. But they're still making an opposition. So moon, Mars, Mercury, opposite the moon. Uh, sorry, sun, Mar Mercury, Mars. Opposite the moon. Yeah. yeah. Not easy. Not easy. So again, this Cancer moon standing alone feeling could also be uh, a feeling of you, you against the grain, against, you know, a crowd, against uh, going against tradition, um, feeling different or separate or having different needs from the crowd, from the family, maybe. That's a part of it. Because when the sun is opposite the moon, it's like, well, who you are is opposite to what you need. If your sun is in Capricorn, you need to be out there completely, you know, holding your decorum, taking care of people, overseeing things, uh, being responsible, dutiful, um, taking charge. And then the moon in Cancer is like, emotions are up to here i just need to lie in bed for a good day or two you know i need to be cuddling in my bed with my dog or uh, i'm just gonna like eat and watch movies and just do whatever i need to comfort myself because my emotions are overwhelmed and capricorn won't won't do that you know it will be like suck it up get going do it anyway it's your duty put on the party get dressed up do the thing you know so sun and moon are always like that when there's a full moon there's there's a push pull between what you need and what you're feeling stressed or obliged to do and then mercury and mars together in sag is very party 
you know, it's very outgoing and direct and, um, you know, funny and playful, but snarky. Moon and Cancer is like, oh, ouch. Why did you say that? <laughs> you know? So, or just like, whoa, you're way too hyper. Like, yeah, your party's fun and you're, you, you, you do you, but whoa, this is too much for me. And it wants to retreat. So, you know, I think that happens every holiday season. There's, there's those of us that want to be part of the party fold. And those of us that are just like, want to be away from it, from the shopping mall or whatever's going on. So it emphasizes that at the full moon in cancer every year around this holiday, at some point. So let's look at other aspects it makes. And the next obvious thing that it's doing is the Neptune square the moon. Neptune and Pisces square the moon. They're both in water signs, but the Neptune square to the moon is not easy. Um, illusion, idealism, fantasies, projections, not being very direct at all more like sneaky covert or almost psychic attack um and that can be within yourself like try not to spend too much time breaking your head over people or situations right now the moon square neptune could have you just spinning in circles going what is that what what the heck did they mean why is this coming up again was that imp were they implying something uh should i be you know it puts you into a swirl of self-doubt. I'm just burning some sage because I don't like this aspect. Um, so try to stay away from anything that doesn't feel clear. Anything where if people aren't stating clearly, they're not transparent. If you feel like there's like passive aggressive things or things that are implied or funky, weird energies around people, just try not to overanalyze it because Neptune is also squaring sun mercury mars in sag it's not an easy time to get to the truth of anything thus why cancer moon might want to go you know what i am just going to get in bed with a book i don't care if i'm at the party where everybody's just like it's breaking my head to be around everybody to figure out what the heck anybody means or wants or why can't we break through whatever force field there is in a in a dynamic that you're at whether that's work or home or it's crazy making mentally crazy making this kind of these kind of squares so try not to go down any rabbit holes all right the only thing out there supporting our moon unfortunately or fortunately is jupiter and taurus it's the only thing supporting the cancer moon so you do have some support um, you're not completely standing alone. Your support might feel like it's about this big, but there is support. So go and Jupiter and Taurus, like we've uh, like we've said, very like secure, grounded, stable, predictable, reliable, comforting, practical. If you're feeling this way, if anything is making you spin, try to just go towards the people that make you feel where you feel the most safe, the most grounded, the most like this is real. There will be some, and those are the people you need to spend your time with during this crazy making time. Like we said, this is the last stand of a full moon opposite um well, it's not exactly opposite Pluto. As you see, we're at 29 degrees and this is four. But still, it's the last full moon in Cancer while Pluto is hanging around in, Can in Capricorn. And it feels to me still like this is one last test. You know, whatever and for, for whatever sign you are. These have been patterns for a very long time, but especially, you know, the Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. If it's the same old head breaking thing you're going through that puts you in these Neptune, Mars, Moon square where you're just like doubling back on yourself, revisiting, rehashing it one more time, wondering if you're seeing it clearly, wondering if you've done the right thing, you're in triangles, 
whatever, like, just do not go there. It's time to call this chapter a day. Like, and sometimes the best way to do that is just to say anything that puts me in the rabbit hole is a no. If it doesn't give me that grounded, safe, secure feeling, you know, whatever decision you made, whatever you walked away from, whatever you're going to that people agree or disagree with, whatever this whole cycle has been about that where patterns are repeating, instead of revisiting it one more time because, oh, your your mom said something and, oh, now is there hope? Did I just, did I misjudge this situation? Did I, and you go back down the same thing you've already analyzed for years, like just don't. Just don't call it a day and honor your own needs and find the people around you that are solid, that make you feel solid. Okay. So there are some other planets that are working well together, but I will bring up the last of the difficult ones first here. And that is Saturn square Venus, never an easy aspect because Saturn will will restrict and deny Venus. Venus is like, oh, I want that. That would be so cool. Oh, I want to do that. Oh, give me that chocolate. Oh, I want to like, come here, hug me harder. I want to do this. We're going to do that. And you're mine. And wow, Venus and Scorpio, nah. you know, all passion and sort of like consuming. Saturn comes along, Pisces goes, nah, nah. We're all one, man. We're all one. Like, you don't own me. You can't own my soul. Like, you can't desire that much. You've got to, like, let go. So it's going to deny some of these intense desires. It's going to slow them down. It's going to make you ask yourself, where is this coming from, really? You know, where is this intense desire coming from? Is it balanced? So that means Saturn square Venus, you don't always get what you want. So it's a bit frustrating. Now, where is it working well? Let's focus on that. Well, where you see the most of these trines, the blue lines, we have the North Node and Chiron and Aries, which as we said in the last reading is all about Putting yourself first and healing yourself in a good way. Know, get to know yourself instead of analyzing other people all again. Turn it back and get to know you. Get to know you. Who am I? What do I like? What do I need? What are my values? What are my standards? That's the way to get out of the head-breaking loop. And that supports down here, it is supported by Mars and Mercury and Sag. So again, like very dynamic energy and very blunt and direct. Some of you might have moments where you're like, okay, that's enough. I said, no, I said, stop it. And you might actually be bold and say it because Sagittarius doesn't tend to have a lot of patience or tact. It'll just say the truth. It's not always a bad thing, especially if it's supporting the North Node in Chiron, where if you are doing it in support of having a healthy self-esteem or reclaiming yourself, your worth, it, it can be a good thing. It might give you a kickstart or a fire under the butt. Now, that same Mars-Mercury, even though it's in Sag, it's making a nice trine. Uh, sorry, I'm wrong. It's it's actually looking like an interesting curve. No, uh, I couldn't see the line. All right, Capricorn Sun and Jupiter Taurus, very strong. So for some of you, if you are the type that can say, you know, no, I'm going to step up. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to bring on the tradition. I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to be the father figure, the parent, the authority, the the one who takes charge, Capricorn. And Jupiter, you might be able to help um, a situation move forward or ground people or help other people because Jupiter and Taurus wants like comfort and practical solutions. 
So some of you will find that aspect comforting, especially if you're born in early Capricorn or early Taurus, like uh, um, December Capricorns and uh, April Tauruses. You might find a lot of strength and stability this Christmas with um, with that aspect. So it sort of talks again about staying real, practical, down to earth. The other aspect that is nice here, well, nice but not easy. Pluto is trying Uranus here, and it's very wide. See, 29 degrees and 19. 10 degrees is sort of considered the max to call something a trine, where you feel those energies are connected and aligned enough to feel them. Could be a bit of a stretch, but Pluto trying Uranus will definitely bring some changes, possibly dramatic changes or upheaval type changes, sweeping changes. Now, because as I said, we're at the end of this Pluto cycle, let, let this happen. Let it be done. As I said, let it, let us move into the liberating side of Pluto. Uranus can come in like a big broom and go, that's gone. Bye-bye. You keep belaboring it. You keep lingering. Bye. We just took it away for you. Or we just brought it in. You said you wanted it. Here it is. Take it. Let yourself be liberated by what's showing up. Uranus will always bring something surprising. And Uranus is also opposite Venus. Unfortunately for poor Venus down here, Venus is trying Neptune. The only thing supporting it is Neptune. Well, a bit of Pluto. Yikes. It actually isn't, doesn't feel good, even though those are harmonious. With Venus and Scorpio, just like the precious, you know. Um, do we really want Neptune going, the precious? Oh, it's so magical. Woo, it's perfect. It's everything I ever wanted. And if I could just be that little bit more, you know, and do we want Pluto accenting it where it's like, it's going to be even bigger than life, you know, like <laughs> not so much. So if you're running into people like that, uh, whose desires are just so intense, like an agenda. Yeah, it's being supported, but it's also being strongly opposed. Remember, Uranus is going to come and surprise it and shake it up and go, you wanted that and you thought it was a straight line, but nope, somebody just did something different on you. We we added or we took away something that you didn't expect. Foiled, foiled the plan for Venus and Scorpio. Now, the other thing is, we said Saturn's also wishing down on, on Venus too. Like, uh, slow down. Nah. So there's a lot of frustration in the air for Venus and Scorpio. So the overall lesson for us, whether you have it in your in your sign or not, is Really try not to be too intense about what you want right now, okay? <laughs> because it could very easily backfire or you could very easily find frustration if you want it too bad. Like desire, sure. Feel what you want and then release it. Don't make these big plans and schemes and it must be this way because it will be very tough. The frustration level will be like, rage in some people some people so um yeah there's almost an aspect there with venus and the moon too that is rubbing but it's not quite there um yeah the overall feeling I'm getting is a lot of confusion and intensity in the air and the desire to either nurture it or to pull away and nurture yourself. And if need be, you might need to take some of this bold calling it out action. And in the meantime, find those who keep you grounded and safe. All right, let's take a look at our tarot. 
what a reading this is, man. I, when I start to channel these planetary energies, like it's very rare, I go, wailed again. You know, like that's quite the Venus and Scorpio. Pluto, whoa. <laughs> wow. All right, let's take a look at our cards. As usual, I'm going to sage my cards. So please tell us what else we need to know during this holiday season to help us get through it in the happiest or healthiest way. All right, so our first card, oh my goodness. Oh, jeez. Well, there she is, uh, the death card. Okay, like I said, this is a last stand type of full moon before we go into a genuinely new chapter of your life. You can let the old things drag on and go back into the same hardened habits and pathways or you can allow life to surprise you, maybe shock you and put you into a brand new chapter of your life. Please do your best, you know, to let life change. There's going to be so much change coming in 2024. And this is like a little precursor. So pay attention to what's coming in suddenly, what's leaving suddenly. And, um, yeah, you might grieve some of these uh, changes. And we're not talking about people. We're talking about, like, uh, in terms of an actual loss of somebody, if that's what you're going through. Like, that's too light and flippant to say about that. This is, the death card isn't about people dying, usually. It's usually about a shock to your plans. Like we said, Venus and Scorpio is going to be very angry if its plans are foiled. Um. Try not to cling too much to what your vision is or your desires are right now, because it could all shift. Our next card is the sun. So that, that very much affirms what I always say about the death card. It brings in something better than you expected. It, it'll it bring in the light. It'll bring in something more fun, more playful, uh, uh, more compatible, more aligned. Oh my goodness, look. And then we've got the three of discs, which is um, full-time work, busy, productive, paid. Something is clearing the way so that you can do something brand new. Could be with your career. Could be, you know, like we said, things that you've outgrown if you let go of them. Can be items that you let go of, physical items, and then new things come in. Can be uh, anything, but... It's a happy, more productive, busy period coming. Then we have uh, interference, which is usually like overthinking. Too much analysis, too many options. So with the work card and the sun, like just, you know, you can say yes to only so many things. Change is exciting. You might be asked to do a bunch of things. You can only say yes to what you can handle. So just... You know, if you if you start going into analysis or hyper overthinking, you're probably overextended. I need to drop something. And then we've got the seven of swords moving on, moving away, moving house, moving home, moving city, moving career, walking away from a group like I'm done. That's it. Things are going to go well. OK, something good is coming in that surprised you and they're going to go well to the point where you're like. Okay, now I'm happy here. Why would I, why would I stay with this? And you're gonna, you might break your head a bit. Eight, you know, eight of swords. You might be over. Oh, should I really let go? Can I walk away? Should I really let this happen? Yes, do it. Just walk away. Let you, let things change. It's okay. Then we have the eight of cups. Well, you feel a bit depressed about it for a little while. There's always grieving, even in good chapters. If you suddenly won a lottery overnight, people think, oh, I'd be so happy. Yeah, you'd have money, but you'd have a new whole set of problems. You would be grieving the life that you had. Even if you have a brand new life, you'd still be like, oh, 
sort of miss the way we had it, even though now some stuff is better, but you know, we, when things happen quickly or shockingly, yeah, no matter what it is, you're going to have a grief for what you had, even though something else is maybe replacing it better. And you're going to have grief over what you're walking away from. That's totally normal. But I really get a strong feeling to do it, to walk away. Then we've got the Eon, or which in other decks is the judgment card, which suggests that you make a final decision and you make a judgment call. But in this case, this card is not about God coming down and judging our souls. This is about us standing for our, up for ourselves, saying this is what I believe. This is where I stand. These are my values. This is who I am. It's more like a declaration than a judgment. Then we have the lust card, which is usually the strength card, where this is the whore of Babylon here. She's lying back, fully passionate, trusting the essence of life, and she's ready to create and participate in whatever makes her happy. And finally, we have the two of one, so it means there will be people around who are not happy with your changes. A lot of people won't be happy when you're happy. They won't be happy when you heal. They won't be happy when you take a stand. Lots of there's always going to be that. And they're basically they're just people who are too afraid to make a change themselves. They might later, but they're they're too afraid for now. So there's they resent you for doing it or saying it. So just remember that if there's any friction. And I'm going to pull one last one. And the last card is the King of Wands, which is to maintain your strong will. Maintain your will. You've thought everything through too long. You know what you're doing. You've had these lessons over and over. When are you going to let yourself get off the wheel and say, I've learned, I'm done? Just let yourself do it. Let yourself do it. And you're going to usher in a much nicer chapter of your life. So because we're close to the new year as well, I'm going to pull a card for how how your new year is going to go. And I, I will be doing longer videos, extended videos for each sign. I haven't started yet, but what I'm going to do is take a look at at the major planets for, for this year, uh, mainly outer planets. Poss Venus changes very quickly, so I'm not going to go into the minutia of six weeks. It's going to be like this. Mars can last two or three months. I might I might start with Mars and say, you know, this quarter of your year, uh, you might notice this or that. Then I will look at where is Jupiter stationed for your sign? What kind of year is that? What's going to be abundant for you? You know, what's going to expand? We're going to look at where is Saturn? Where am I learning lessons this year? Where am I restricted? Where am I tested? And I'm going to go on like that for each sign. And I will have those up on YouTube. I'll do my best to have them up by the new year. And if not, they'll be shortly into the new year because uh, I really have to do a lot of analysis for that. But uh, that's my that's my intention to you to have to have that. But for now, we're going to do uh, your overall your overall vibe for 2024 coming up because we already know how Christmas is going to go. We're already in it. We already had it. Okay. How is your new year going to go? How's your new year going to go? Your 2024. All right. All right. Aries. Well, success, success. You're going to have a very good year. See? The clouds are lifting. Clouds are lifting in your career, your self-expression. You've tried many different hats, many different roles, many different jobs, perhaps, or you've done many different things within even one steady job. But you're going to renew yourself and you're going to express yourself more in 2024. And I think you're going to see some expansion in your career life, your work life, which it would include more salary this is a very good card for your work for your year obviously now what do you need to do to make that happen or to sustain it i always go back if you can see the center of the card 
sort of hard to see. There's a cross and a rose, and it's surrounded by a, a circle of light, and then it's surrounded by these spheres of different planets and these outer spheres and outer spheres. So as you can see, there's so much sense of protection and of healing yourself. And so in order to heal in the area where you've been affected the most by Pluto, which is your career, your self-esteem, your status, how people see you, your reputation, you need to be, uh, you know, very grounded. This is a Taurus card. You need to be grounded and a little more temperate and charming, but not fake. And you need to show some confidence. You need to take a step and find some help if you need help. Find a coach, find a counselor, so that you can step into this new chapter of your career um, feeling much more confident so that you set a completely new tone for how you're valued, how you're treated, how you're paid. Beautiful. I love it. Taurus as your 2024. And we have a Taurus card. Again, we have the Prince of Discs. So now he is sort of sitting in a funny position, isn't he? He's facing forward, but he's looking down. So what does that tell you right there? Somebody, if I'm sitting sideways, but I'm facing forward, I'm torn, right? My feet want to go one way and my body wants to go another. And I'm not even looking where my body wants to go. I'm looking down. And yet all those resources are there. The chariot is there. The bull is ready to go. He's holding the world in his hands. So what's he's holding the, the ball and scepter. He has everything he needs. So why won't he turn around and look up? Why won't he align himself? Turn around, straighten up, look up. So it means that you're feeling either insecure about where you're going. You don't trust yourself <clears throat> to, to, to get what you want or go where you want to go. Some some might be, you might be hiding things from others or from yourself. So you might not be completely honest with the people that you're around or the, or the, uh, the direction you're going. So you got to get honest with yourself. And you got to really turn your self-esteem around this year. Because you're ready to roll. There's nothing stopping you from succeeding and, and jumping forward quite a bit. But there's something out of alignment. And I would say... It's out of alignment with um, you're either in the wrong place for you, so you don't fit, so you're torn. You're not seeing yourself clearly, so you know you're looking down, or you're like you're out of alignment. So you need to get good with yourself. You've got everything you need to go forward strongly this year. Gemini's, your twenty twenty four. Well, wealth, investments, property, inheritance, loan, bursary, bonuses, managing funds. This is a money year for you. Um, you'll be receiving it. Maybe some you'll be paying out, but you'll be receiving it. You'll be managing it. You'd be well to get some financial advisor on your side this year to learn about investing, to rejig or rejuggle your own personal finances. Um, it's going to be a huge changing year, but I do feel that there are resources for you and you, you need to, um, you need to accept and look for those resources to help you increase and maximize what you have. And some of you are going to get extra money and it will land on your lap. Um, but again, be, be, be mindful, be wise with it. It's, it's a very grounded card. There's mercury symbols all over this thing. It's, it's not, woo, I'm going to go on a trip. You know, it's not spontaneous. It's very thought out money. It could be money that you have to work quite hard for. It could be investments you have to do a lot of research for. Could be inheritance money where you're dealing with the states. 
but there is finance coming into your life and it needs good management. So this will be an interesting theme for you for your year. Cancer. What is your 2024? <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I'm smiling because Cancers have had Pluto going through their love and marriage house. Love, marriage, and open enemies house for 16 years. And now we get the king of cups. We get love coming in. We get somebody who is a match, who is attentive, caring, devoted. Beautiful. For some of you, maybe your marriages will improve quite a bit. There'll be breakthroughs. For some of you, obviously, there will be final endings and new people that come in. Some of you that are single might finally meet somebody. This is lovely. For the open enemies side of it, there could be a reconciliation or a calming down of the waters. You might They might be revealed to you. You might soften them. They might shift focus. But there's a lot that you have learned about relating and dealing with people and about what you need in a relationship over these many years. And I would say, if you are willing and ready to say, I deserve love, it is there. It is there this year for you. <laughs> Leos, what's in store for you 2024? Okay, you've got the Ten of Cups. So this means that um, you're you're a little overwhelmed and, and tired and burnt out. It says satiety. You know, are you satisfied? Are you? Or is there always more to do, more to add, more to buy, more to achieve? Because you might be burning yourself out trying to get the satiety. It's a bit of brain fog always with this card. There's a lot of light though too. There's insight, but there's a lot of brain fog. You're sorting through some loose ends, some endings, some um, who, who, who's where, what goes where. Um, there's probably a lot of rebalancing in the relationship side of your life too, but it might be more to do with your like friends and colleagues and um, you know, extended family, stuff like that. Not so much the core people, but the, let's say, secondary layer of people around your life. Yeah, there will need to be things delegated, pardon me, or let go of. Um, you need some headspace desperately. Yeah, because Pluto has been moving through your um, eighth house for 16 years, which is sex, death, and other people's money. Uh, am I getting this right? One second. Uh, sorry, I'm very visual. I need to draw it to make sure I'm saying I'm doing this right. I want to make sure I get the house right. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's the it's the sixth. It's been going through your sixth house, which is health. Health and service to others. Okay. All right. That's a bit different then. So that makes sense then that I said extended families and extend, you know, colleagues. And the sixth house is all about your um those secondary, if you will, or tertiary relationships, you know, communities. Um, aunts and uncles, uh, nieces and nephews, neighbors, things like that. There's there's a lot of overwhelm. Um, maybe you've been trying to be too many things to too many people. So this year, 2024, is all about you making, making some clarity and some headspace and re like changing your role. 
or how you see yourself or the role you play and making some room mentally, emotionally. All right. <sighs> Virgo, what is your 2024 going to look like? Hmm. The universe. Wow. Some sort of crowning year. You're ending a long, long cycle. The universe can bring all kinds of stuff. It can bring a lot of evaluation or endings. But it can also bring, you know, uh, success, closure, things coming to a, a pinnacle. There'll be both. You know, you might have some high heights. And you might have some evaluations where you're saying, I'm done. I'm done this chapter of my life. It's overall a very good card. And uh, because we know Virgos already analyze everything, you've pro probably been analyzing everything and everyone for a very long time. So I get more of the feeling this year of closures and um, sort of the rewards, reaping the rewards of, of the work you've done. There could be recognition for something you didn't expect. Um, there could be you know, people that you do really love growing closer. Projects that you have wanted to manifest, you might finally do. Other things, you know, the year usually would start out with the other thing where you're, you have to let go and say goodbye to and close the door and call it a day on some stuff. So that's what you can be doing right now is uh, going through and taking stock since we're at New Year. And think of a few things that you're okay to let go of right now and you'll set a lot of the other good stuff in motion i get a very good feeling for your year very good all right libras what is your 2024 going to bring yeah You've got the King of Wands, so so the strong card of will, strong masculine energy, going for it, you know, able to enact whatever he wants, forced to be reckoned with, a bit dominant. So that usually doesn't describe Libras, but it doesn't mean it can't. You've been dealing with enough enough stuff on the home front that um, you might be finally feeling bold and strong enough to take a stand within those family systems or the home front or whoever's in the house with you, whoever's in your immediate family, you might be, you know, using the justice side, the scales, the deciding side of the Libra more than the bouncing, weighing, pleasing side, you might finally be ready to call something out and say, that's what I've decided, finally. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm not doing. Some of you, this might represent an actual person that comes into your life with a strong will. Um, or And that could be anybody that, you know, you might decide you don't want that strong will this person could be all about them. Maybe, maybe that's the big change. Is uh, read, you know, boundaries or, or uh, letting go of said person. If you're with somebody who is domineering. Um, otherwise, it feels more like you who's taking a stand this year. And uh, again. Libra, you've gone through so much crap with your family life or within your home. It's enough now, isn't it? You're exhausted. It's time for this chapter to end, like we said. So if you are just done hearing about a certain thing between like people going, nah, 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 you know, and you're in between people's stuff and you've had enough, you're going to say, I don't want to hear it. I've had enough. Or that's well, that's how I see it. You're just going to call it because you've waited for too many years. 
So I see more of a strength rising in you in the 2024. Scorpios. With Venus in your sign right now, making it very hard for you to like relax. You're on overdrive. All righty. How is your year going to be, Scorpio, 2024? Okay. So you've got the seven of, of wands. Um, this is always a card of standing up for yourself against opposition and setting your setting your boundaries. The card says valor, right? So when we think of somebody who's valorous, you often think of a knight with a sword, acting on proper ethics, doing the right thing, being transparent and clear, and showing that you're willing to go to bat or protect or stand up for the truth regardless, of, you know? But in this case, this card always looks like the wand is being crushed by everyone around them. So you have to find that core ethic, ethics and values and strength. And you have to stand in your truth this year and overcome whatever you feel you're surrounded by. And it could actually be people. But it also could equally just be internal if, if you're going through any kind of struggles where you won't let yourself quite be the strong version of you, where you're compromising your values or your your beliefs in any kind of way, where you're letting anybody walk on you or letting things slide that are actually not good for you, let slide. So this year also, you'll take, you'll take your power back. First, you need to get really centered again in what you think and what you believe versus everybody else. And then you're going to take some sort of stand. The, the, the dragon year is coming, guys. It's a number eight year, which is all about personal power. And it's a dragon year. And dragons are bold and they breathe fire. They're not, they're not wimpy and they're not pleasers. And it's going to ask all of us to be stronger all right sagittarius how is your 2024 gonna go ah very nice the empress so some of you might be mothers or become mothers that can be through anything whether you're pregnant or not it, it could happen to be in a mothering role towards somebody close to you uh your sister, brother's kids, uh, a neighbor's kids could be grand, but you could be a grandparent. But um, there's a nice, lovely mothering, nurturing feeling. Somebody close to you might be having a baby, even if it's not you. And you get to participate in, in their lives in some way. Otherwise, it's an extremely potent, creative message right to birth something so if it's not a baby what else would be equal to that what would be a birth what could you give birth to so there's like you know the gestation period where you have to nurture an idea a project uh something that you really want and give birth to it this year so that's lovely. It feel yeah, potency is a good word of what I feel for you this this year. Might not happen right away. You might take the first half of the year to figure this out and start putting it into motion. And you might put it in motion, like we said, you know, more um, incognito because you're not trying to draw attention. You're birthing. It's got to be in the womb first, so it's more protected before it's launched. So there could be really big projects or plans or events or if it's not a baby, it's something equivalent and it takes equivalent time. Very interesting. All right, Capricorns. How's your year going to be? All right. And it's a nice earthy card. It could be a Capricorn Virgo Taurus card. It's the princess of discs. 
So this is nice because it's the it's the youthful version of a very practical and capable person. Um she's full of potency. You look at the the light the beaming up at her from her wand, her fur. We don't know what she's is she in front of a giant hearth. We can't see, you know, is she beaming light from her wand down at something that's glowing back at her? But it's very potent, right? It looks like she's also almost going to give birth to something. But the feeling I get with her is like you've gone through a huge reset. And now you're like sort of a, you know, a, a wise but youthful energy. You know, you can bring a more flexible, adaptable side of you to your wisdom side. It's not as intense or serious as it was. So there's nice grounded sort of renewal feeling where you're ready to go out there and face the world in a new chapter as a new version of you that is very centered and capable and ready to go and ready to be more flexible, but also very aware of your power. <laughs> amazing it feels like a a reset a ground zero in a nice way i mean some of the potency with the pregnancy stuff could happen to some of you uh but again like i said for sag if it's not a baby um it's birthing something else something equally important is being birthed so that's exciting Aquarius, how was your 2024? All right, you got the seven of discs. So now Pluto is going to start the spotlight on you for 20 years. Depending where you are in the sign, if you're early January aqua, you're going to feel it first. If you're later on in, in Aquarius in February, you've got many, many years. Now, this card looks heavy, and it is. Um, Pluto's going to come in and sort of, just like it did with Capricorn, it's going to start to peel away the onion and transform you little by little by little by little. So there's, the feeling I'm getting is like, for some of you, there's a sense of, a failure or loss um, as you start to transform and things that you counted on are going to change. You might perceive that as a failure or a loss. Some of them might actually be, but in the bigger picture of things, they're not. Because Pluto is coming along to really bring us into the next, a whole new chapter of life on Earth. And everybody will be reevaluating their lives. And so will you. Saturn and Taurus is all about what do you value? What's most important to you? Do you actually truly love yourself? Are you getting a sense of self-worth to sustain you no matter what is thrown at you? And that's sort of the beginning of the peeling of the layers this year. So some of you, if you've been feeling very lock and load, secure, stable, and you start to see things going a little bit rocky, yeah, it's going to be unsettling. But just remember, the whole world's going to be feeling that, not just you. And you're not above what's going on in the world. And so as long as you don't judge yourself too much for this, and you, and you can tell yourself, okay, I'm ready to be adaptable. I'm ready to shift. The whole world is shifting. I'm not above it. I'm not below it. I'm with it. Allow the shifts. Allow the adaptations. And this period of growth will go a lot easier and quicker and with more enjoyable transformations than kicking, screaming, and dragging down the sidewalk kind of transformations. Because Aquarius, you you know, you can be stubborn. So the hardest thing 
And the best thing you can do this year is to try to be adopt an attitude of flexibility and change is okay and change is not a reflection of me personally failing or not. It's just something that happens to all of us. And finally, Pisces. Ah, and you get the death card back again. So for Pisces, you're going to see a massive turnaround and a good surprise this year. So expect a little bit of a Oh my goodness, what happened? I thought, and then the gateway's open and something better comes along. So for some of you, if you're not in a great situation where you live, where you work, your relationship, you could see a sudden shift, something change, forcing you to change. But it's for the better. It will bring in something better than what you've got now. And so I feel like once you've gone through your death card moment, you're going to be actually very happy afterwards and liberated, excuse me, this year. So it's the beginning of the year until you have this moment that is a little harder. And once again, just like with Aquarius, just like with all of us, the more we resist changes, and that can mean hanging on to the relationship and doing therapy five times, even though your gut knows this is done. That can be fighting uh, legal battles, even though you don't even really want to win what you're going to win. You just think you should fight to win. Stuff like that. It's about allowing the death card moment to happen. Oh, I thought this was my person. But deep down, I have been having doubts. But no, no, it's my person. And then the death card challenges you. Someone else comes in the door. Or you're just getting serious doubts and you know you've got to go, you've you've got to go. You, it's just not working anymore. And you're terrified. You gotta let it happen and trust the life. And it's hard, it's hard, I know, to do that. But the death card is always a good card. Because the surprise, the thing that comes, it it cleans out one thing and it brings in a better one. It always brings in a better one, and it doesn't take forever. It's pretty quick. It's not a slow, painstaking, suffering kind of transformation. It's a quick switch. It's, oh, I ordered a chocolate cake for my kid's uh, birthday. And what shows up is a cheesecake. And you're like, I didn't order this. It's not what I wanted. I was counting on this chocolate cake. My kid was counting on this chocolate cake. It's not there. It's not available. You're disappointed. Turns out the cheesecake. 10 times better than the chocolate cake. That's how the death card works. It's quick. So whatever this applies to, that's why I say like, try to minimize your resistance and your fight so that the death card energy will can happen quicker. And then it will usher in something brand new and better for you this year. <laughs> As usual, if anyone wants a session, um, it would be nice if you all subscribe. And I never say this at the beginning of the video because I'm just not wired for self-promotion. But it makes me happy if people subscribe and it makes me really happy if people share my videos. So I would love that. And if you have any comments, I, I'm happy for all of the people that regularly comment on my channel. I do. I very much appreciate that. And I wish everybody a very happy new year. And let's really look forward to this exciting change of the chapter that we're going through. All right, all the best.